and today we are learning the herringbone single crochet stitch thank you so much for your suggestions on videos that you'd like to see on the channel one of the reoccurring suggestions was different stitch tutorials so starting off with one of my favorites is this variation of your traditional single crochet stitch so without further ado let's get into it and just quickly i just wanted to share what materials i'm using today for our yarn, I'm using Pearly Haze by Hobie. This is a category four worsted weight yarn and it's a viscose wool mix. Um, this yarn on the band calls for a six millimeter hook, but I'm actually gonna use a five millimeter hook. And the hook I have today is this five millimeter hook from Furls. It's a really nice hook, has a nice weight to it. And this size actually worked out for me for this swatch here. And it gave me the definition that I wanted, but also uh, created a fabric that had a lot of movement. So this is what I'm gonna work with. Keep in mind that the hook or needle size that's listed on the ball band of any yarn, treat that as a suggestion and not as a must. All right, so let's get into it. So one thing I'd like to do before we get into the tutorial is to review the anatomy of our single crochet stitch, just our traditional single crochet stitch. I think this will be helpful for beginners and will also refresh those of us who are more familiar um, just to know the names of the different parts. So as I'm calling them out throughout the tutorial, you'll know what I'm referring to. So first I want to point out our turning chain. So it's this area right here is our turning chain. And then this is our first single crochet stitch. So if you're looking at your stitch, you want to take note of a few parts. First, we wanna take note of the loops at the top of our stitch here. So the one that is right here is our front loop. The one that is here is our back loop. And if you turn the work over to the back here, there's another loop that you should know and it's our third loop. On the front here as well, looking at that stitch, we have our post of our stitch. So it's this here and this here. This is your left post, this is your right post. And then this is your foundation chain that we created at the beginning with our chain stitch. And that's all we need to know for our single crochet stitch. So I will, on the next screen, just have this uh, laid out on the table here with little arrows pointing to the different parts. So once again, you can uh, see the parts without me moving it around, but also so you can take a screenshot of it and save it for later reference. So first we'll start off by making a slip knot and then chaining any amount of change you would like. For today's swatch, I will chain 16. You don't have to chain an even or odd amount, which is really nice for this stitch. Chain whatever number of chains you'd like. So once you have your chains, you're ready to start. And I like to work in the back bumps of my chain. So I'm gonna be working in the bumps that are here. But you don't have to, if you'd like, you can work through the front of your chain like that, it's just fine. This is just all a preference. So we're gonna start from in the second chain from our hook and you'll first start off by working a traditional single crochet stitch. Okay, I'm gonna pull my hook out here. And so here's our turning chain. And then here is our single crochet stitch. You can see our front loop, our back loop, our left post, and our right post. To make your herringbone single crochet stitch, you first will insert your hook behind the left post of the stitch that you just created, and then work a traditional single crochet stitch. So insert your hook into the next chain spot. 
if your chain's a little tight, it might be a little tricky. Yarn over, drop a loop, making sure to drop that loop to the height of the loops that are already on your hook. Yarn over and then draw through all three loops on your hook. And so you've created your first herringbone single crochet stitch. And you'll be able to tell because your stitch has the posts on your stitch are leaning to the left. So to work the next one, you'll identify that left post again, which is there. It looks a little different than your traditional single crochet stitch, but it's right there. Insert your hook behind that left post and then work a traditional single crochet stitch in the next chain. So insert your hook into that chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. All right, I'm gonna show you one more time. Identify your left post, which is right here. Insert your hook behind the left post and then work a traditional single crochet stitch in the next chain. Alrighty here, so we have our first stitch here, which is our traditional single crochet stitch. And then we have one, two, three herringbone single crochet stitches. And you can see that they're all leaning to the left. So I'm gonna continue working this all the way down our chain here. And then I'll come back when it gets to the end to show you what it looks like. So we've gotten to the end of our row and you can see we have our one single crochet stitch here and then our 14 herringbone single crochet stitches. And you'll know you did it right because all of your stitches should be leaning to the left. And so now that we've completed row one, we'll move on to the second row of this stitch. And so to do that, you want to chain one and then turn your work. Chain one and then turn your work. So this is what the back of our work looks like. What I find that helps me is to tilt my work this way so that I can better see where I'm inserting my hook. So putting my hook, my loop back on my hook, I'm first gonna work my, uh, my first stitch, which is that single crochet stitch, but we have to do it in reverse. So what I want you to do is move your working yarn to the back or toward you to the side that's closest to you and now we can work our reverse single crochet stitch so we're going to flip our work towards us so we can see what we're doing so this is our turning chain this is the first stitch of th that we'll be working in so you want to work your reverse single crochet stitch into that stitch to do that with your work flipped towards you you will insert your hook into your fabric from the back to the front. And this is what it looks like from this side. So usually, if you're working your single crochet stitch, you would insert your hook from the front of your fabric to the back, like this. But for a reverse single crochet stitch, we're inserting our hook from the back to the front. And if you find that it helps to hold your work like this, I would highly recommend that you do so. So once you've inserted your hook, we'll complete the same steps. I'm gonna hold it this way so that you can see what I'm doing on this side, but you'll yarn over. You'll pull a loop through, drawing it up to the height of the loop that's already on your hook. You'll yarn over again, and then pull through both loops on your hook. And you've created your first stitch of that row, which is a reverse single crochet stitch. And if you flip it this way, you can see your uh, your parts of your stitch here. So I'm gonna take my hook out and just flip this around really quickly so we can identify the parts of our stitch. We have the front loop, the back loop, third loop, and then we have our post here. We have this post, which is a little 
hidden and we have this post here now we were going to be we're going to be working in this direction so we're going to be uh, inserting our hook uh, beneath this post here to work a reverse herringbone single crochet stitch slightly tilt your work towards you so you can see the back of the fabric and we're first going to insert our hook behind that left post that i'm pointing to and then insert your hook underneath the front and back loops of the next stitch. Yarn over, draw a loop, drawing it up to the height of the loops that are already on your hook. Yarn over and draw through all three. And so we've created our first reverse herringbone single crochet and our stitches are leaning in the other direction. And so we're going to, once again, complete those same steps inserting our hook through this left post here, or the post that's closest to our working edge. Insert your hook underneath the front and left loops of the next stitch. Yarn over, drawing up a loop to the height of the loops that are already on your hook. Yarn over and pull your loop all through all three loops on your hook. And you have another stitch. Now, one question I've received a few times is, how come you only insert your hook underneath the, when you're working into that next stitch, how come you only insert your hook underneath the front and back loop? Why don't you insert it beneath the third loop as well? And I would say both methods are right. And I think it ultimately comes to what characteristics you want your final fabric to have. If I'm making something like a mat or a basket or a purse, something that I want to be a bit stiffer, to have a bit more structure. If I'm working the next stitch or working uh, these stitches, instead of just inserting my hook underneath that front and back loop, I would also underneath, insert it underneath the third loop as well. But if you're making something like uh, something for a scarf or ear warmer or a hat and you want to have more movement, I would highly suggest only inserting your hook underneath that front and back loop. So both ways are correct, but it, it's all up to you based on what characteristics you want your final fabric to have. I'm going to demonstrate the return pass a few more times and then skip ahead to the end. So once again, identify that a post that is closest to your working edge or closest to your working yarn. Insert your hook underneath that post. Now working into the next stitch, inserting it from back to front, underneath the front and back post. Oops. Yarn over and pull up a loop to the height of the loops that are already on your hook. Yarn over and pull a loop through all three. complete the last stitch of the second row and now I'm going to chain one turn my work and now I'm prepared to work row one again for my forward pass so here is what just one set of that two row repeat looks like our forward pass and our return pass and then this is what the back of it looks like so the back of your fabric may look a little different if you did work underneath the front, back, and third loop of your stitch, and that's fine. It'll just, instead of having these little ridges, it'll just have the little Vs from the uh, backs of your stitches, which is fine. But again, like I said, that is up to you based on what final characteristics you would like your final fabric to have. As always, if you have any questions, definitely drop them in the comments box below. Thank you so much for all of your suggestions on videos that you'd like to see on the channel. This was one of those suggestions, uh, different stitches and different crochet stitches. So I'm happy to bring this one to you. I have a few more planned for this week, so make sure you stay tuned. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.